So, uh, what's for lunch today? Now, many of you are looking forward to that time right after the service when you get to go out to eat. Or maybe you are going to enjoy a home-cooked meal with your family. So, what are you going to have today? You can probably picture it already, especially if you're hungry. And if I talk slow and sermon goes on, he gets even hungrier. But most of the time, we don't really think about what we're about to eat. We just decide, well, I'm hungry. Let's go eat. Or I'm hungry. I'm, let's cook something up. So we just show up to a restaurant and we just decide on the spot. This sounds good, or I like this, this tastes good, or this looks good. Sometimes we don't even bother to go in. We can call in our order. We can drive through. And we, we're almost like, when we talk about driving, it's almost like we're cars. You know, you run out of gas, you drive to the nearest gas station, and you fill it up. So we get hungry, and we do the same. We find the nearest spot where you can get something to eat, and we go for it. Maybe it's mealtime, and so we, 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 we choose a place to eat, or at home we, we prepare a meal. Sometimes we just get snacks because we're hungry. We just grab it because it, once again, looks good and, and sounds good and smells good and tastes good, and we eat it. We don't give it a second thought. Most of the time, we, we don't even decide based on what that food is, is it good for us. Now, it, it changing is it's changing a little bit. You can see uh, calorie counts on the stuff that you order. But most of the restaurants still don't show you all the calories you're about to eat because it, you won't eat it because it's like three times the stuff that you're supposed to eat. But, man, it tastes good. We decide based on how things make us feel at the moment. And we don't give it too much thought. We're busy. We eat as, as we go. We fill up when needed. We eat on the run. And so this practice does not allow a lot, whole lot of discernment when it comes to what we eat. We eat what we can, when we can. We pick our foods based on how good it looks. When you drive by a fast food restaurant, just, just look at the pictures of that stuff. They make your mouth salivate. And you say, well, that's wonderful. I'm going to buy it right there. Not much different than a sit-down restaurant. So, in our gospel text this morning, Jesus uses this imagery of food because he knows that we, we like food, we eat food, we, we need food. And he uses this imagery of bread. Now, the great thing about Jesus, amongst other things, is that he was a great teacher. And being a teacher is, is, is taking things that you know and, and, and moving you to a, a place that you haven't been to yet but based on something that you already know. So he's talking about things that he already, that he knows that we know. He's talking about bread. He's talking about food. And he's repeating this again and again. Bread of life. I'm the bread of life. The foundation for his teaching this morning is, uh, was in our previous readings in the weeks before where Jesus fed the 5,000 men plus the women and children with the only five loaves of bread. And next, he explained the source of that bread of life. And now he's speaking about the importance of this food, heavenly food that we eat, this bread of life. And he repeats this again and again. I am the bread of life. 
And he says, this bread of life is better than any food that you eat. So think about all the foods that you eat, including the food that was provided to you, he's talking to the Jews, to your predecessors, about the manna. It's even better than that. Because I am the bread that feeds your soul. And he says, this bread brings about not just life, not just, doesn't just fuel you up so you can survive, it gives you eternal life. Jesus' words themselves give life. Are you hungry? Do you have spiritual hunger? There's such a thing. In the parable of the prodigal son, you know that story well, the young man had this hunger. He was hungry to experience things. And so he thought money would, would, would satisfy him. So he gets all the inheritance, he cashes in. He thought popularity would, would bring satisfaction. And so he spends that money on partying and, and, and friends and, and pleasure. But it doesn't satisfy, so he ends up physically hungry. Remember in the story, he was looking at the pigs that he was watching, and they ate more than he could even eat. But that physical hunger brought him back to this realization that what he needed was the hunger to be satisfied in his soul. And the point of that story was that that the world cannot feed us. Only God can truly give us what we need. And we have needs. We have physical needs, emotional needs, relational needs, and we do have spiritual needs. How do we feed our spiritual needs? What are you feeding your soul with? Once again, we have this mentality that we just eat on the run. We just grab whatever is convenient, whatever is available. Maybe it looks good. Maybe it smells good. Maybe it sounds good. But we don't pay much attention most of the time about what's really in it. I mean, we, we don't even see it on the menu. Well, how much fat is in it? Or how much trans fat? How much sodium? No, it, it makes us feel good. We eat it. As long as it satisfies us, we're good to go. And we translate that into our spiritual hunger as well. What do we feed our spirit with? What shapes your spiritual well-being? And if you're not spiritually well, that, that, like that prodigal son when he was lost, it affects everything else. Your sense of who you are, your happiness, your satisfaction, your relationships, your emotions. Even your physical condition changes if you don't have this spiritual well-being. And where do you get that spiritual well-being? When you're fed, when God feeds you. Now think about how much time and the kind of the attitude you have about coming to church, for example. It's basically an hour of your time that you get to spend with God. And then do you just kind of drive off to the next stop? Or do you let that word dwell in you richly? Do you read the Bible? Do you pray? Do you kind of meditate about what God's will is? Do you seek it? Or do you just kind of grab it on the run in kind of a drive through manner and move on to something else. You see, God wants to feed you. He wants to sustain you, to grant you life. It's interesting that Jesus was born, as you know, in Bethlehem. But do you know that Bethlehem means house of bread? And when he was born, he was placed in a manger. 
which is a feeding trough. Think about it. The creator of all that there is made himself lowly to the point of being placed in a feeding trough in a manger where dirty creatures come to eat. Why did God choose this way of presenting himself? Well, because as Jesus unfolds in our text, he is the bread of life. He is the food of life. He came to feed you. And just like he came in this humble manger, he continues to come to you in humble means of grace. Through the words of the holy absolution spoken to you by your pastor who stands in the stead and by the command of his Lord and announces to you what basically sounds like, well, he's pronouncing forgiveness, but sounds very humble, yet it's so awesome to know that indeed your sins are forgiven. It comes to you through a preached word. In here, in, in this sermon, in any sermon you should hear about Jesus Christ and him crucified for you for the forgiveness of your sins. It comes to you through pretty humble, lowly elements of bread and wine. They're not very impressive. But according to Jesus' own promise, this is very, very, where, where he feeds you his very blood and, and body given and shed on the cross once again for the forgiveness of your sin. In all of these things, God gives you the food of the food from heaven, the bread of life. He gives himself. He alone is the bread that can nourish, and it does nourish your soul. He alone is the sustenance that also gives life. That's for this very reason, Jesus tells you today that when you eat of this bread of life, you will live forever. He gives you his own flesh, which is for the life of the entire world. So receive, come and receive, come and feed and be thankful for the bread of life, the bread imperishable, the bread indestructible, the bread immortal, the bread that doesn't spoil. For when you eat the bread of life by believing in the Lord Jesus, when you with repentant hearts confess your sins, and you receive Christ's forgiveness, you have the promise that Jesus gave you. You believe. Because of that, as Jesus reminds you in our text today, you have eternal life. Continue to be fed by this. Amen. <laughs>